Okay, uh, so uh, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, depending on the region you are at. Uh, this is Suba Mirza, and uh, I'm representing uh, uh, on-time training and consultancy services. Uh, so today we are going to uh, have a conversation with uh, Pawel uh, about his successful PGMP journey. And uh, with his PGMP credential, he has also become three, three certified with PMI, which means that he has become PMP, PFMP, and PGMP all. Uh, but before that, let me uh, give you a brief introduction about myself and my company. And then uh, we are going to uh, formally begin the conversation with uh, Pavel. Um, myself, Tuba, I am the founder, owner, and uh, lead consultant uh, on-time training and consultancy services. I have a professional career of around 18 years now. And uh, I uh, I have worked in the project program and portfolio management capacity uh, in a variety of organizations in multiple regions, actually. And for the past three years, I have been running my uh, agency, on-time training and consultancy services full-time in the uh, lead trainer and consultant uh, position. Um, I have uh, multiple credentials in my portfolio. I am triple P certified uh, by PMI. I am IRMP certified. I am PPS certified as well. I am a certified trainer of uh, PMP and uh, CAPM uh, trainings. And uh, I also have uh, PSM credential. And uh, lately I have uh, done my uh, governance credential with PCGQA organization as well, which is uh, P3GP credential which means that uh, uh, we have uh, governance portfolio as well in our organization. On-time training and consultancy services is a professional training and consultancy setup, which provides uh, training and uh, consultancy services uh, in the project program and portfolio management and governance domain. And uh, we are mainly the follower and advocate of uh, PMI and PCGQA standards, and we follow that in our training and uh, uh, products and other services. Uh, so if you need uh, such services uh, in the, in that capacity, you can always contact us. Uh, now let's uh, formally begin the conversation with Powell. And uh, today's uh, agenda is solely focused on how Powell successfully achieved uh, his PGMP credential and uh, how was his journey and how uh, what, what uh, path he followed actually to uh, get to this point. Uh, hi, Pavel. Uh, hi, everybody. Hi, Tuba. Hi, the audience. Uh, happy to see you in here. Same, same, same. So, uh, Pavel, first of all, a brief introduction about yourself is going to be better for the audience because so people uh, like to know you. And then we are going to begin the conversation about your PGMP journey. Uh, hi, everybody. Once more, um, my name is Pavel. I'm from Sweden, um, living here in Stockholm, and uh, in the capital. So, um, the, I have I have let's say experience mainly spreading in terms okay of domain industry spreading between finance and IT. So I started like a lot lot years ago as a product owner within finance uh, industry, but then soon I become let's say portfolio, uh, let's say project portfolio IT manager leading the big um, uh, portfolio of products for, for IT asset company, for the stock exchange and so on, uh, pension funds, mutual funds. Then I moved more close to the tech domain. I joined the Electrolux Group, uh, is a famous uh, producer of home, home uh, appliances, uh, ovens, dishwashers, uh, uh, stoves, fridges, and so on. So very big uh, global portfolio. There, I was responsible for IoT domain, so how the appliance itself is connecting to the internet, producing of, of special mobile app, helping users to, to let's say, control appliances, to track the data, you know, like, and, and so on. So still I was, let's, let's say, um, near, near the IT domain. And uh, I was I was responsible for managing the digital quality portfolio for the whole taste care will being uh, so mean for for cooking appliances, uh, laundry appliances, and air management appliances. Okay, for the whole portfolio according to ISO to the best to the best standards. I also 
have multi-year experience of program management uh, in IT. Uh, started from digital transformation, coming to uh, let's say such programs as migration of of databases from one one cloud provider to another, merging the uh, merging departments also could be seen as a program. Uh, launching some let's say uh, IT solution for some uh, range of products. So this is this is my my experience. Uh, I'm PMP, PFMP, and PGMP certified. The last uh, the last two certifications, PFMP and PGMP, I did with uh, our beautiful mentor Tuba. Okay, so uh, Thank this you is us. yeah. Yeah. My introduction. Yeah. Thank you uh, so much for your introduction. And uh, so, Baba, uh, people definitely uh, would like to know that. Uh, uh, and you went for your PGMP after you uh, were done with your PFMP already. So, why did you choose to go for PGMP? How it is helping you in your uh, in your current role or in your uh, professional career? People would like to know this. Yeah. Um... I would say it was it was a quite hard decision. I know it was done like within one, one day after I finalized uh, and graduated PFMP, but there was a huge pre-work because it was like really an issue of mo motivation because currently um, it's it's another big story. I, I would say currently I'm I'm within agile agile world of IT, and PGMP is mainly about the waterfall. You know, like. And for example, portfolio management is very good scaled. It could be scaled up, uh, let's say, down to the product owner role. He's also managing the backlog and up to the, you know, like CEO role. It's a portfolio management. But what's about program? There is no so, so many, let's say, examples of small programs. Usually it's some, something big. So it's not very easy to find, you know, like, for example, in construction dust, of course, it's, it's, it's easier to find. But in IT, okay. Then I think, okay, I uh, I want to go in order to save my experience. But when I when I prepared to this, then I saw some when you know, like I just recalled my experience. And I thought, okay, it, it could be also seen as a program. For example, digital transformation is a perfect example of program. Merging the, the departments, some uh, organization transformation, which I did in my career, it also could be seen as a program. So there are a lot of implications on program. I will share in chat my article on Medium. You can also read it. Uh, like non obvious, non obvious examples of program within IT realm. So still, still, I think it is very interesting exam. But a lot of people failed it. Also, even they haven't PFMP, PMP because they couldn't find enough motivation. I want to recommend or uh, maybe the right relevancy with respect to what they do. Relevancy. Yeah. Yeah. relevancy because we have for example a safe framework you know like and there for example program program means something different it could be like agile program but it's not like a traditional program what we are speaking about mm -hmm. so and the program and, I mean, uh, and uh, you are implementing the principles that you have uh, uh, learned in your pgmp uh, curriculum in your uh, work as well are, are you getting that opportunity at work to implement what for you sure. have learned in pgmp Yes, it was. This is one of my tricks of preparation to the exams, both for PFMP and P and PGMP. I did this. I open, open for example, one file, my Jira board or different documents and so on. Uh, a lot of the communication trackers, and just show the two best selections or just the standard and see. Hey, if was it implement up to the right standard or not? Was it implement or not? So, for example, there was a big. Um, be compliance program you know like for for some data regulation within europe mm -hmm. and i say hey i want to do it according to the best practice of pmi this actually I, I, you are actually comparing you do, you are you are having a comparative of your current practices versus what uh the best practices suggest you're doing this and this is how my brain is working that's why i gave i i'm getting you know like the additional motivation for passing this exam rather than doing only theoretical stuff okay now now it's also practical and at the same time i help in my work and preparing for the exam so i also advise everybody any certification what you want to pass you know like implement and like in parallel in parallel and uh, uh, Pavel, uh why is it doing, because you did your pmp away before your uh, pfmp and pgmp so 
uh, this is like a, a commonly asked question that uh, our knowledge of PMP, uh, the project management practices from a PMI perspective is helpful or is useful during the PGMP journey or not. So what would you say about that? For sure, I would say the PMP is very close to PGMP, of course. Uh, but but um, comparing to PFMP, PFMP it's a bit different story. Yeah, PFMP is very. Me, yeah. It's very close. But actually, my my uh, all my career was more like portfolio manager. Even I would say product owner is a small portfolio manager. I grow from IT product owner, you know, like. And project manager is about like what waterfall. These people are more coming from you know like from construction industry, from more traditional industries. I also did this within my finance journey. But frankly speaking, I'm I'm more like, in, you know, like more, more agile and like co coordination, product owner and portfolio management. So, but of course it, it, it helps a lot. It helps a lot. You should because know. Because the life cycle concept from initiation to closure in a project as well as in program is same. Like there's an initiation, then yeah. planning, then delivery, execution. I mean, that concept is same and the artifacts that we create in project like WPS and plans and management plans and all that is also there in program. So there is a mm -hmm. relevancy with respect to the terminologies, artifacts and uh, yeah, different phases. Uh, but, but the concept of program is more comprehensive than project, right? It's not the same, but uh, you will find a lot of you know uh, relevancy with respect to PMP, at least with respect to the terminologies. Right? Of course, I would I would add. Uh, of course, it's more you should understand better strategy, corporate strategy alignment, and also the governance governance practices, also the benefits management. But uh, but there is one is this note from my side uh, also in order to prepare good for PJMP, you should uh, re read the. PM book uh, six edition, not the not the latest seventh one. one. Yes, the seventh one. No, not, not the seventh. Read really the sixth one. There are a lot of techniques which are not within seventh yes, edition. Yes, agree. Agree. Uh, okay, so moving forward, uh, Pavel, uh, like this is the question which is uh, coming from almost everyone who is actively preparing for PGMP or who is aspiring for PGMP as well. That, uh, what was your exam prep? journey uh, uh, uh in, for this credential like how much time did you take how many months of or, or how, how many hours of study what was your schedule how did you manage with your very demanding job so what yeah. do you suggest okay yeah uh, first of all um uh, what once i uh, okay once i kind of completed pfmp it was uh end of november last year i talked to tuba hey tuba according to your estimation you know, like how fast can I pass PGMP? And there was some estimation, but I I saw that it will be very fast because I can reuse both PFMP and and uh, PMP. But basically, it was a bit different story because when I passed several mocks, like with no preparation, I I saw not very good results. I don't know why. Okay, but still, I think okay, I still I still release in all lectures. I still you know like do some mocks. I still try to recall my my knowledge, you know, like in my my, my experience. So mainly, I I was inst intensively preparing for for a couple of months, I believe. So. Um, and uh, uh, can you recall how many hours of a study have you actually done? Because we suggest a study of around hundred to one twenty hours. Uh, on average, that's uh, usually. Uh, working for uh, most of the uh, delegates but uh, did you say I more think, did I you say it, less yeah no i think it would it was like uh, two times less <laughs> so but it was my my case because i have, like i every day working with program managers with different program managers with yes. a very big different program offices in electrolux like probably the other person who is driving only one program for example he should possess this because I have wide experience, yes, like every everyday experience, uh, and also because I passed PFMP, so and and PMP I also passed not like ten years ago, but two thousand twenty, so not not very recently. Yes, yes, Six you have done recently, but but you did that with the uh, previous uh, format of yeah. not the new format, uh, which has been changed. Yeah, 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 yeah. 
Uh, uh, yeah. And how many months uh, did you actively prepare for PGMP? So I started preparation in February, but from February till June, I just listened to lectures. I was so busy during work. In July, I started, started very intensive preparation and also in August. Uh, I also took some days even uh, during weekend. So, so I, I, you know, and like, would I you some... like to suggest something like uh, uh, what should be the focus uh, for study, like uh, standard or maybe uh, question answer banks or uh, maybe some slides? What should be the study? Uh, what should be the focus of the study for someone who is actively preparing for the exam? I would say there should be some some iterations. So first of all, of course, you should read the the standard. Uh, uh, then, then go. Let's say run the first, the first, um, the first. Let's say um, run of uh, of this uh, test mocks. Then, then you should go in deep. It's better, of course, to to subscribe to to Tuba and to subscribe to her course uh, to, to listen to this perfect lecture because they are also very good in visuals. Standard is very, you know, like it's not vivid. And I also have a lot of complaints from my colleagues around the world that they that the standard for PGMP, let's say, is is very is very is not very useful for preparation. Comparing to PFMP or PMP, why? Because there is no ethos, there is no like input outputs. For me, it is no problem. I, I my my head is not working like this, like like a robot, you know. Like, but some people are very algorithmic; they need this. For me, it was not a problem, absolutely. So I like this. You are, uh, you are already like day in, day out, you are using all of this and uh, like it makes sense to you even without memorizing it. But memorization doesn't really work in the exam uh, for those uh, who are uh, preparing for PGMP. It's not about memorization. It's more about logical understanding and conceptual connect of the different artifacts and different uh, processes of... Uh, no, I can say like this for PMP. Memorization can help. I can say this. Somebody, people, some people say that no, only, only full experience, no memorization. No, I would say there should be a lot of things to memorize. But here in program management, you can see the the standard that's not very big. There is an, uh, there are like you know like common word there. What you should memorize? There is n n not a, a lot above of you know like of uh, PMP, but. Uh, but you should have real experience here, especially working with governance. You should don't have experience working with governance, with the steering committees, how you know, like uh, do this communication with them, how you setting the governance models, you know, like I think it will be very hard for you to pass the exam. I agree, I agree. And uh, probably when you were actually there in the exam room writing your exam, uh, what was your observation with respect to the exam experience actually? Like how did you manage your time? How did you actually manage uh, that, uh, you know, anxiety and nervousness during the exam, if there was any? Uh, or any tips that you would like to give with respect to the exam writing uh, tricks? And yes, uh, this, this is a very frequently asked question. Uh, actually, there are a couple of questions which is related to the exam actually that we received from uh, uh, from the delegates that are there any calculation related questions in the exam are there any very hard or ECO related questions in the exam yes or no uh, because uh, there used to be uh, uh, the case uh, earlier I mean a couple of months ago so what would you say what uh, do, would you like to answer uh, okay, first of all, I, I would like to describe how how I pass the exam. I pass it in, a, of course, in let's say offline in specific center, yeah, in particular center in Stockholm. Uh, there you have four hours, yes, and I, you know, like I I finalized all 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 the questions, of a, a bit less than three hours, but I mar but I marked about se about fifty questions, I think, like like this, then. Uh, when I finalize it, I run through all these flag flagged questions, and and I you know like I improved I think one third of them. So, but then I also had like twenty minutes left, 
and I run like one question by another and I and I I I stop on question number 70, something like this, or 65. So then then so it's like okay. Yeah. Uh, do you recommend uh, using the mark for review option? Because there are uh, certain people who say that, uh, no, that actually makes us more confused. And at times we get the rightly marked question wrong uh, when we use that feature. No, no, no. For sure, you should use this option. For PGMP, I have not, uh, you know, like improved a lot. But for example, PFMP, it was more than, than 50%. I, and I, I passed all about the target for PFMP. For PGMP also except one one uh, let's say block where it was target, and uh, the second tip I I did this tip even uh, you know like uh, also I I I executed uh, during my PMP exam also PFMP and PGMP before starting the exam when you're giving the sheet of paper you are just writing several questions on this question question to you which questions first of all. Uh, first of all, it's not a question, but a statement. I am a program manager because it, it gives you the right mindset. You're not now a project manager. You're not a product manager. You're a program manager, okay? Then, second one, uh, in which process I am now? I am in closing. I am in, you know, like in planning phase of the program. It will, you know, like, then, you know, like um, uh, some hit, uh, some also some tip, uh, see the root cause, uh, you know, like, because some some questions seems to be very easy, but the real root cause will be the another answer, you know, like. Mm -hmm. Then my typical strategy is like uh, elimination of, of uh, you know, like uh, fake fake answers or, or, or wrong answers. You know, like usually I eliminate uh, two of them. Then there is a competition between two. two. But sometimes that's always, the case. That's always very... the case. Yeah, yeah, that you are left with two uh, like very close options uh, for every other question. Yeah, but sometimes there was there were some some questions where I I I, I stand in the in the maze of four questions, <laughs> and 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 every and every and every answer and every answer was okay. So there were tricky questions, I believe. For the mass, there were not not a lot of tricky question and what about the calculation related question did you get any calculation related questions yes as, as, as i told uh, they, they were quite easy they were quite easy but uh, but the secret is, is 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 lurking in in the essence of this question you should know what to calculate or or even if you if you really need to calculate probably you should not calculate probably the answer is is something different so <laughs> yes and even if you are going to get a calculation related question you are going to get uh, a calculator embedded in the simulator exam simulator and you will get a sheet a uh, removable sheet a uh, pen and paper and uh, i mean everything is going to be provided to you so you don't need to like worry about how you are going to do that i mean uh, uh, that is uh, accommodated in the exam arrangements and uh, so there was no direct question, no ECO based questions, no memorization based question. Everything is scenario based. In the I faced I faced some di direct questions. Frankly speaking, not a lot, not not a lot of very di direct questions. But probably they were not direct. Probably they were direct according to my estimation. Probably somebody will stop on them. Probably for for me, it's very simple. Yes. I, I see it as a direct question. Because How you can really well, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, okay, so let's come to that part, which is. Uh, ah, but by the way, also sorry for interrupting. Also, one good recommendation. I wrote two big programs which I led. In, in this case, I have the visual vis visualization in my mind, mm -hmm. not just abstract question, but I think, hey, how how I did this within my program. How I worked with stakeholder, all these risks, this. <laughs> yes, everybody okay. has their own tactics of, uh, like you know, mind mapping the uh, uh, their understanding. Maybe like somewhere on a sheet of paper or so before starting the exam. So, however it works, but uh, of course, uh, at times we learn from others' experience, and at times the tr the tactics that work for you uh, can be helpful for the others as well. Uh, so uh, the actual area of interest usually for the aspirants and uh, those who are actively preparing for the exam is uh, that uh, material, that uh, prep 
uh, guidance and mentoring that have been uh, provided to you uh, during your journey. So one very, I, I don't know uh, if uh, uh, everyone in the audience uh, section is aware or not, but uh, for every other PMI certification, you are supposed to be uh, fulfilling an application process with which you actually uh, certify your eligibility for the exam to PMI. And once the application is approved, only then you are allowed to sit in the exam. In case of PGMP, uh, that process is uh, like exponentially comprehensive with respect to any other credential like PMP or ACP or RMP or any other credential that people are usually aware of. So, uh, uh, and it's like uh, a little uh, like uh, more, uh, you know, rigorous uh, experience and it's uh, harder to pass uh, that uh, application process and panel review and all. Pavel, uh, how was the experience for you uh, uh, with respect to the application process for PGMP? Was that smooth? Mm, yeah, yes, I, you know, like I, I say I prepared several programs, I think uh, two or three programs in order to pass. No, it was not only one program which I, I sent to panels, but uh, but uh, this time I was audited. So I should send some materials and should send some confirmation from my manager in this case. And like to PFMP, for example, yeah, I, I was audited for PMP and PGMP. Okay. So you shouldn't be stressed, but 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 you should know that that it could happen. So it's not like uh, just some bot or some AI just you know like checking something there. There is a re real commission who is sitting there. That's correct, and, and uh, yeah. that's very very okay. I mean, this is their process. They can randomly at times randomly at times they they find a, a need. To, to check that uh, delegate's uh, experience or maybe some other uh, part of the application and uh, they, they need to check it and that's totally okay. But if you are successfully able to provide the relevant uh, details and artifacts and whatever they are asking for, it's totally, uh, I mean, it's a, it's, a, it's a very smooth process. Even audit is not a scary or a difficult process if you have everything ready with you and if you are not faking it out that's very important and it's very very easy to clear the audit process and usually i mean it's not hard and fast but usually once your uh, in case your application is audited then the rest of the approval process becomes a little more easier for you with respect to the other uh, applicants because they are already done auditing and uh, checking your uh, experiences and all so uh, yeah and that's the case. However, uh, whatever the case is, I have seen myself because I am like uh, very much into all, all of this and I write uh, PFMP and PGMP applications very often. I have seen that even very nicely written applications are also audited and uh, that's totally fine. I mean, PMI must have their own reasoning to, uh, to go for that. Uh, so... Uh, but, but once your audit is clear, uh, how was the panel approval process for you? Because that is exactly what the troublesome part is in case of application approval process. I don't remember. I don't remember. Uh, for, I, I remember there were two, two requests. One for the audit process was asked to provide some materials. And on the panel review, it was, uh, it was like um, they asked um, my manager to confirm my experience. Okay. That's part of audit. But, That's part of audit. Yeah. Part of audit, but for the panel review, it's it's behind the the, the scenes, so I don't know. So I I just wait. Then, then they told me that I passed panel review. But of course, you need to work a lot on the application. Yes, application is uh, application is not uh, objective. It's very subjective, and uh, uh, they uh, they expect you to write it in a certain way. Uh, they want you to actually map your program management experience uh, in the PMI way of thinking. This is exactly what the application is about, to write your real-life uh, program experiences in a way that it maps to the best practices of PMI with the necessary jargons and uh, processes and principles and whatever is needed uh, uh, in the whole application. So there is a way it should be written and you should be very careful about uh, writing your application. Uh, okay, and the next uh, 
area of interest for uh, the delegates is uh, the actual exam prep. Once your application is approved, of course, you are supposed to be sitting in the exam and uh, you need to pass the exam to earn the credential. So the material that has been provided to you, by material I mean the, uh, the, the recorded sessions, the support, uh, question answer banks, slide decks, and uh, whenever there is a need to explain the concept. Uh, yeah. How was that overall? Overall, it was okay. So I listened to uh, your recording once because my time is really very, very precious, extremely so. I, I couldn't afford myself to listen to it twice. Uh, I wanted, I, I I enjoyed them, but okay, can I do this? Uh, then I just, you know, like as I told me, I just, you know, like I'm 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 a portfolio manager within within my company, and and also I'm a continuous improvement coach. Uh, so I just, I from my net I found some programs which are not finalized, and as a coach I approach to them, and 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 told people, hey, I I I I can support you with this. You have some problems there as a coach then i select one one program and i improve it with p my knowledge you know like so just what i just open this conspect of the election of your elections and see what 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 was wrong how i can improve it as a continuous improvement coach or this yes in this case uh, it was very good preparation for the exam then i passed mocks uh, i think two times they were not 100 uh, percent they were like 75, 75, I would say, 70, 75. First run, second run, of course, close to 90. Uh, also, they are very interesting uh, mocks in terms of theoretical and practical knowledge. If you're, if you're just reading the answers, because I also did like the third run. The third run only, only read the answers. You know, like I only read the answers. It was very interesting answers, by the way. Also for, for my practical experience. So, and uh, I I read standard two times, I think, but I read it many times before in my in my practical work because I've created a lot of documents, master plans, master schedules. So I, I know it, it's okay. Which yes. version of the standard did you read? I'm, I'm purposely asking this question because like this is a confusion going on that uh, do we go for fourth edition? Do we go for fifth edition? Because fifth edition already is in the market and for the exam, mm -hmm. which one is more relevant? So... Uh, fourth. which edition did you read? Fourth, for? fourth, no, no, not fifth. Fourth, Why? and uh, I mean, would you like to shed some light on uh, on that part? That fourth edition actually is more relevant with respect to the current PGMP exam, and of course, fifth edition is there in the market, but as of now, the exam has not been majorly updated based on the fifth edition. Uh, people probably would like to know that from your side as well. Uh, I don't know if you can rephrase the question because I have not read yet uh, fifth, fifth edition. I don't have time, but I want to plan to, to read it uh, by the end of this year. So, But did you find the relevancy of your fourth edition read for the exam prep with no, respect sure, to the yeah. exam uh, that you have written? For sure. Um, the elections, of course, were the main sources, but... In terms of memorization and like visualization, uh, I, I like them. Yes, but in general, of course, standard is very good in terms of ac academical knowledge. Uh, but you need to be ready to understand that it's not like it's not the same as standard of PMP in terms of the of the spirit, because there uh, there is almost none of techniques, very small amount of diagrams or pictures. Compare it even to PFMP standard. It's just a plain text, plain humanitarian text. You read it like a novel, you know, like. But then, uh, then you should read it for sure, and also read the uh, vocabulary uh, or, or, or the dictionary in the end of the syllabus. That glossary is very important because that actually helps you familiarizing with the PMI terminologies, which is very, very much needed in the exam. Absolutely, because uh, a lot of uh, I work in the industry for many years. I uh, saw so many program managers. They call them program managers, but they do absolutely different. No, not not in the line of PMI. Sometimes they're just a product owners or delivery managers. I don't know why they call this program. So, so. I agree. I agree. Yes, that that's the irony uh, 
uh, uh, uh, very interesting yes. the, the PMI I understand but I like the understanding of PMI because it is very academical it is very good to read I'm also I, I finalized the business school of management and it's very academical words there comparing to some for example words like safe Kanban they use a specific terminology not understandable but audience here uh, uh, everybody can understand the industry in all in all industry so that's why I, I encourage you to follow the PMI pass. And uh, while doing your preparation, uh, did the material that we have provided you, because I was your mentor and uh, you actually uh, hired me actually for, for the uh, preparation uh, for your PGMP credentials. So the mock exams and the recorded session for PGMP curriculum, was that more than enough for you to study and understand and absorb everything and pass the exam as well? For sure, I, I would recommend everybody who want to pass tubas not, you know, like exaggerate and to concentrate on tuba selections plus standard as additional. Otherwise, you can uh, go, to, there are like a lot, a lot of books uh, you can see about program management. I don't say they're bad, but it's better to reread, to memorize something, you know, like to, to think about your experience. Because... I think everything is is collected within Tuba slides and and her, and her her lectures and also these mocks is a really beautiful mocks with beautiful beautiful explanations of you know like of answers. There are sometimes there are very big explanations. So thank you very much, Pavel. And uh, okay, so Pavel, uh, this question I always ask uh, because uh, you know at times people like they are at the like they are confused between choosing PGMP or any other credential or maybe like they are uh, they are clear that they want to go for PGMP but they are not really clear that why why they would like to invest this much because of course every credential or every uh, certification it comes with a monetary investment as well so how do you see the return on the investment of your money and time and efforts and uh, you know everything uh, like of course, you must first have all, some all, Tuba, sacrifices, yes. right? Yes, first of all, Tuba, of course, it's a huge amount of your energy time. Even though the, the money, of course, on the level of portfolio manager, probably it's not extremely big amount of money, also in terms of exam, but also it is not very small, okay? But the your time and, and, and energy and, you know, like actions, your alternative investments are, are very precious in this case. So why to invest in, in PFMP? So uh, there are not many other options within our current planet, I would say. Uh, unless you're going to somewhere in Stanford. I know in Stanford there is a course. In Harvard, it's more close to portfolio management. And in Stanford, for example, there are some, but but there you will pay a lot, really. So, and you invest more, more energy and time. But why? Because I would say, under the umbrella of program management, it's not only about, you know, like driving the, let's say, complex projects as multi-stream. It could be seen as a complex project, but such things as digital tran digital transformation, which now is everywhere. If you will be PGMP certified, you will be you will be driving like uh, I don't know, with with a lot of with a lot of more uh, efficiency. So also digital transformation, reorganization of or, or let's say engineering of some business processes, uh, re reorganization to also a program. Sustainability is now in the focus of multiple companies. Sustainability is long-term benefit. And okay, for example, uh, program is a very good example, program management of uh, uh, how we drive sustainability. There are a lot of different examples, examples which will help you throughout, throughout your journey. For example, now I will... I, I will joining uh, within my company the digital transformation for the cash management work stream. And I, I'm not very big expert of cash management, but because I'm, you know, like uh, I'm expert of program management, I was, I, I become a member of steering committee. So it's like, you know, like, uh, so it is very good, good investment because there are no other alternatives. There, are, there is also, I think, in, in there is also another certificate. I don't remember which certificate, not PMI, but it is not, I believe, not so academical. So and are you talking about MOP, management of programs? 
Yes, 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 yes. About 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 this uh, about this certificate because for the project manager we we have a lot. Yes. We have print. Uh, we have prints, but for the program not a lot, I believe. Other than MOP, I don't think there is any other program management certification available around the So yeah. and especially my message now to IT colleagues. Uh, I understand now we are living in, in agile world, and so, somebody will. Uh, laugh at you hey you want to do a program for five years we are now working on scrum but really guys uh the, the time the time will teach us that soon it, it will be changing because you know like i also see according to the european industry more and more program management program managers are needed in the industry because because the infrastructure becomes more costly more precious building the good infrastructure projects Complex programs is very is very valuable skills today. Very valuable skills. So I I agree, and uh, you know uh, I I I understand that uh, maybe uh, there are people in the audiences or maybe who whoever is going to listen to this webinar later on, maybe they would not agree to you. Maybe they would have their own uh, definition of return, which is probably very monetary or very uh, you know uh, job related or promotion related or something. Uh, and that's fine because we, we can have differing opinions and that's totally fine. However, at the end of the day, uh, a person should not be compromising on continuous improvement, uh, everyday learning, getting better and better, and uh, uplifting your profile with the right, uh, you know, with the right weights. You know, these credentials actually uh, give the uh, weightage to your profile in a, in a good way. And uh, when that starts happening, the uh, if, uh, the other rewards automatically starts, uh, you know, uh, up, they, they starts appearing to you uh, at the right time, maybe not right away, or maybe not at the very next day of earning the credential, you are going to get a promotion or a new job or uh, an appraisal or something. However, this is going to happen as well. At the right time, this is also going to happen. However... <laughs> Yes, please. It is no. like a lifelong in investment, I would say. It Sorry for the very, very pathos word, but, but it's really like this. Yes. You, you start getting uh, recognition as well as your opinion. It starts, uh, you know, it, it starts uh, getting the right uh, recognition and weightage and, uh, you know, uh, that attention in the organization, in the meetings and all. And this has its own weightage uh in your uh, work life not everything is uh measured with respect to the monetary aspect and not everything is tangible the intangible benefits is uh in my opinion way more uh beneficial than the tangible ones and, and this is like uh, this these credentials and the learning that you are going to acquire via these credentials they are going to earn you a lot of intangible benefits i can guarantee you this and also one one more from my side, probably also one more piece of mo motivation. I haven't included this to, to my article, but but still, it's still it is very interesting because see from the historical perspective, like a lot of big programs in the past, for example, building pyramids, a mission like a space satellites, even some political programs, you know, like building a beautiful cathedrals. They are all the programs, not the projects or even not the portfolios, not the products. They were all the programs. So also to 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 become more educated educated person, you know, like it is very it is very good to to pass this this exam to have the certification. Uh, okay, very, so very... Powell, uh, we have got a couple of questions in the chat box, and um, just to wrap up this conversation, and then we are going to answer those questions. Uh, what would be your last word of advice to the participants and uh, to the PGMP aspirants? Uh, okay, first of all, you should you should really think if you really need this uh, this uh, certification because it's a huge amount of uh, of of time and and your energy and and not zero amount of money of course. So you should weight it properly if you really need this. Yeah, uh, I I have I gave you the pieces of of motivation, but definitely the certification is not for everybody. Not for everybody within IT or within other industry, even not for each project manager. So 
you you should stop probably you should invest your time better sorry for this uh, okay but but uh, if you want to go yeah i think you know like uh, you should you should build your first of all your motivation strategy because a lot of my colleagues failed on this step a lot of people but once it's done then you should uh, you, you should find somebody who should support you it could be a mentor it could be some club of you know like of of students but it's not easy frankly speaking to find a club of students we tried to build this in sweden but there was so small amount of people so so only two two, two people left in in that club so so yes the right I... guidance uh, is uh, very very important yeah. uh, and uh, your own experience uh, it's also very helpful as well yeah. as the right material uh, it's very very useful and uh, helpful so all of that like club together actually makes your journey interesting and uh, purposeful there's a reason why you are doing it right so that goal yeah. should be achieved at the end of that day thank you very much uh, Pavel for your time yeah. and uh, for uh, providing the useful uh, insights and suggestions to the audience and now uh, there are a couple of questions uh, that uh, the audience would uh, want you to answer. So let's uh, move to that part. Uh, so first of all, Hadi Khan uh, is asking you that which resources you have used for uh, uh, preparing and the mock test and all. I think we have talked about that, but maybe he has joined late. So uh, like just very quickly, if you want to. Uh, talk uh, about all mock tests uh, are within uh, two best pack. Uh, to 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 tuba preparation pack, which which was provided to me. I know the, some people uh, are buying it separately. Yeah, I never had this experience. For example, for P PMP, I uh, when I prepare for PMP, I use some mocks, uh, some simulators. I buy, I I bought it myself. But here, everything is included within tuba pack, and it it is it is a better in, in investition rather than buy, buying them se separately believe me it will be very, very costly to buy all the smokes and that was so. more than enough for you to learn and prepare and get ready uh what would you suggest the mocks that i have provided to you was that enough for you to enough, enough for sure i even haven't completed all the mocks like uh, i would say 70 percent of the mocks because okay, okay. Uh, so Ayat Rehmani has a couple of questions for you and me, like both. So let's uh, see that one by one. Uh, he is asking, uh, I'm sure uh, he is a he. Uh, I, I mean, it, it, uh, it can be a lady as well. So if you can also provide uh, update on your course, Suba, and how much duration, uh, is there any free mock-up test within your course? Uh, Ayat, you probably need to contact me separately, maybe via LinkedIn. Uh, I have shared my communication channels as well. You can contact me uh, via WhatsApp, via call, via LinkedIn, uh, whichever mechanism suits you. I will provide you a brief about uh, my offering, uh, my service package. And yes, we have some free material available as well, which can give you an idea about uh, how uh, our uh, program gets executed. So maybe you'll reach out separately to me uh, for that. Uh, and... Uh, Okay, so the other question is, uh, what comes first, PFMP or PGMP? Uh, you can do PFMP first, you can do PGMP first. Uh, there is an eligibility criteria for both credentials and for every other credential by PMI. If you fulfill that criteria, you are eligible to go for that. And you need to provide your eligibility, you need to prove your eligibility in the application process. So. I can quickly tell you the eligibility criteria for both. Uh, it's not about a prerequisite kind of thing that you need to do PGMP first to uh, become eligible for PFMP or uh, vice versa. For PFMP, you need to have uh, four years professional education. With that, they need at least eight years of professional experience, business experience, they term it as. And that, uh, like four years of hardcore portfolio management experience, that is for PFMP. For PGMP, they need four years of professional education with your bachelor's or master's or any degree uh, higher than that. And with that, uh, they want you to have four years of project management experience or your active PMP can also work. 
and they need uh, four years of hardcore program management experience. Right? So if you fulfill this criteria for PGMP or PFMP, you can go for any. For in, in my own case as well, I went for PFMP first and then I went for PGMP. Pavel also uh, took the same route. He did PFMP first and then PGMP. But most of the time, people go like in a step-by-step -step manner that first project, then program, then portfolio, then the organizational or enterprise related uh, planning and management. But there is no as such. I, I know those people as well who did their PGMP first and then they went for PM. So as long as you fulfill the eligibility criteria and eligibility criteria is available on PMI website. So you can check that as well or you can reach out to me. I will explain that like in, in, uh, in way more detail. Uh, okay, another question from Ayat is how much experience Powell has in managing programs? So Powell, this is for you. How, how much experience do you have in managing programs? Uh, I, I already, I already provided my short overview in the beginning of this session, but still I can repeat. Uh, for me, it's hard to calculate the overall overall years of experience, but definitely more than five five years, like pure pure program experience. Mainly I, from the point of view of portfolio manager, I was involved, but also I drive some specific specific programs. I can stay on the programs as. Um, Compliance program, big compliance programs uh, for for some range of appliances, for example, range of laundry appliances to the market, to the global market. You need to, you know, like to specialize uh, and to ensure the digital quality for washer dryer, washing machine, and tumble dryer. There could be different, yeah, you know, like and for the dishwasher, yeah, and for different different uh, markets are, are different. Latin America, this one. And different stakeholders, so it's a program. Another good example IT people can understand me is the migration databases. For example, from IBM Cloud to AWS Cloud, you should migrate uh, hundreds thousands of connected appliances. It includes a very big amount of sub project like big building architecture. You know, like working with contractors and so on. So it's it's, it's a program with a long term benefit. Yes. Also have specific management programs like merging two departments. It's like the uh, reorganization and also digital transformation, digital transformation in one particular department. That was my program experience and it's not, it's not end. Uh, and I think you have a couple of years where you were managing programs and you were managing portfolios like in parallel. Right. Yes, yes. Uh, for example, uh, previous year I was managing reorganization program. And in the same same time, I I I was management uh, portfolio. And that was exactly the time when you decide, when you were actually doing your PFMP and you sure, were actually sure. considering uh, going but, to PGMP as well. Yes, but I also while doing PFMP, I did some notes already for for PGMP, because it was a perfect program. I reorganized the department, and in the end of this program or organization, I should have a portfolio of products. So then benefit is a portfolio. So I, I am killing two hairs. So I'm preparing for PGMP and PFMP. So just from my own idea, how many, uh, like, uh, how big is your team for the portfolio management or the program management? Or how many, uh, like, members are you actively managing under your supervision? Uh, the team is not, is not so big. My direct reports are only five people. Yes, but each of them is, I would say, sub portfolio manager. One is for care appliances. The second one is for uh, cooking appliances and so on. There are also some uh, schedule assistant. Yes, but the st the stakeholders net is is like thousands of people, I believe. So because your organization actually follows the agile mindset uh, more, so yeah, yeah for no, sure. Yeah, there is less concept of like direct supervision and more concept of. Uh, Cross collaboration in the organization because of that agile mindset in the organization. Anyway, no, no, no. Uh, yeah. Program manager also in our industry it's usually not have a lot of direct reports, frankly speaking. Yes, I understand that. I understand that. So Mohit Malotra is asking. Uh, he first of all is congratulating you on earning your PGMP credential, and he is asking that 
how was your 20 days before the exam look like for preparation? Maybe he's preparing actively. <laughs> That's why he yeah. was. Yeah. Yeah, 20 days, yes. Uh, okay, so uh, 20 days were very intensively okay. I, I stayed after work. Also, some days uh, for unpleasantly to my wife and my children okay i i should come also to, to to the office in order to you know like to concentrate on preparation on some saturdays otherwise i will not i, I will probably will pass of course i will pass but with not such good score so i try to prepare good so i just uh release uh, no not release and re read my my election my my notes yes redid mocks then i just review all the answers for these mocks like very very like sc like screen them you know like this this my my life hack yeah then uh okay i i, I also reread standard and then i slept uh, well maybe exam. wants to know that how many hours you were actively allocating per day or per weekend uh like when when the exam date was approaching Okay, I spend uh, I think three Saturdays, uh, eight hours each. Uh, eight hours each, like on is... Saturday only. No, Over three, three, three oh. weekends, not all weekends, but Saturdays, oh. eight, eight, eight hours. Okay, and also after work I stayed for a couple of hours. I think three or four, four days a week. So act so I don't know how probably I invested forty hours the, the, during this last month, okay. and it was like uh, it was like more than fifty percent of overall time I spent to the preparation. Forty forty hours, like in the last three weeks, and uh, you know, yeah. not really evenly divided uh, in the days. Uh, at times more, at times less, but. Uh, yeah. you were like more focused, um, uh, maybe during the weekends because uh, that's like a more focused time that you uh, you have got for the preparation. Uh, so, uh, usually, uh, like the number of hours allocation can vary for different people, however, uh, your uh, like uh, your last two week focus should be more on the practice, uh, and uh, standard understanding. Uh, and uh, I, I always advise this, maybe that works for you, Mohit, as well, that after you are done with your practice and uh, like maybe training or recorded sessions or whichever mode you are going for, it is very, very beneficial if like in the very end, you, you are reread of standard, especially seventh and eighth chapter, which is about life cycle and the activities and the fourth chapter as well, which is about benefits. So doing a very final review of standard actually, like it, uh, it's very helpful. And uh, some concepts which uh, doesn't make sense in the beginning, they start making sense uh, to in the end uh, during the read. So uh, maybe you try that out, um, and that should be very helpful. Okay, so we have only two minutes left, and uh, there is one more question. So Abdul Aziz is asking that, um, Pavel, are you? planning to take the PFMP exam. He is already PFMP certified. He actually did his uh, PFMP before PGMP. So yes, uh, of course, he's done with that. Uh, Abdul Aziz and he asking uh, one more thing, uh, Pavel, that uh, <laughs> if you are getting more employment offers after doing your PGMP, uh, Maybe he is not interested in the employment offers, Abdul Aziz. But yes, uh, let's let him answer. Pavel, uh, are you getting employment of, uh, of opportunities after getting PGMP certified? Uh, in, I have not not employment opportunities uh, outside, but uh, inside the, the, the company because Sweden market is not very huge. I would say so. So it's not very very easy to find program management job, frankly speaking. So, but inside company, I uh, also as a continuous improvement coach, I have several now s several askings uh, for me to help with some important programs. But I don't say that uh, that was because of the exam. Yes, my circle I I is informed, but I don't know. Probably I don't know. Probably I th th they know me as a program manager, 
so only because you are already working for a good organization yeah. in a in a in a good yeah. role and you already have the right opportunities with you and uh, that was not the intention for doing this credential uh, oh no 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 it is not of course you you should not be you know like um uh, you should not go to wrong the wrong direction that you have this credential and you will be you know like like dozens of hr will knock to your door we will not be like this I you should agree. have proper logistics you know like to implement this certification you know like to to carry it i agree i agree uh, like i said for well, different people have different aspirations and different way of thinking yeah. And we can't say uh, right or wrong to something, but uh, I think uh, like whatever your approach is, but one thing is very constant, which is continuous learning. You should not be compromising on getting better and better every other day. And this is exactly where these credentials really are helpful. Uh, so in the interest of time, uh, I think we should be wrapping up the session. Thank you very much, Pavel, for your time. Thank you very much, audience, for joining and for contributing and participating. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed this conversation uh, and uh, I hope Pavel, this, uh, this is the same case with you. Uh, we yeah. can uh, wind up the session if uh, there are no more questions from the audience side uh, for Pavel. I think we are good. So thank you so much, Pavel. Um, take care. I, I, I will just leave a link to my to my article about the program management in IT. Please do that. Please do that. You because... can see it in the chat. But it was a pleasure to communicate with all of you. Uh, with uh, Tuba, thanks for organizing this uh, meeting. It was I, I was happy to, to share my experience. I hope somebody will be motivated. Uh, and here I was here this summer not to sell you something like you know like a seller or or like a magical doctor, but just to say that it's very good certification itself. So it's very valuable. So if you're in, interested connect with tuba or write to me in linkedin i can also give some some advice I, i'm not a mentor but okay no, no i think you can be a very good mentor you should try that out uh but uh, yeah thank you very much everyone uh and thank you uh Pavel, once again i will surely come back like very soon with another success story webinar with some other uh, delegate and in case anybody is interested in uh, joining our program or reaching out to us for uh, any kind of help with respect to project program and portfolio management capacity, you can reach out. Uh, you can search me over LinkedIn. You can search me over Facebook. You can search me uh, or my company uh, like uh, with my uh, communication channels and uh, we can, of course, connect and sort that out. Uh, take care. Have a good day. Bye. Yeah, bye.